Hello friends and welcome back to another episode here on the channel. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and in today's episode we are going to be doing something a little bit different from usual, a little bit special. We're going to be covering and kind of reacting to a match that I took part in in the 2014 World Championships in Washington DC. It's a match between myself and Barish Akos. It is round three of the World Championships and for those of you that don't know, I'm sure many of you do know Barish, but he is the uh, he's got a huge personality, large than life German player like accolades coming out of his ears he's got like amazing player he's got like national championships top eight worlds regionals the list goes on and on and on so very well decorated player uh, had an amazing career when he was playing and uh, it was it was a real pleasure to play him at the world championships very nervous at the time for myself uh, obviously I played Barish I think in the 2013 world championships the year before in Vancouver and it didn't go very well Barish kind of handed <laughs> my butt to me that in that tournament but coming into this one it was a little bit different uh i had kind of i don't know i felt coming into the 2014 world championships like i had something to kind of prove got my invite the year before uh for the the 2013 in vancouver and didn't really perform as well as i wanted to so i was very determined to kind of do well in this tournament and it turned out pretty well uh, i ended up finishing top eight in this tournament finishing seventh overall and uh, it's probably to this day my best finish in any tournament and probably my best kind of accolade that i've got personally and i just have a lot of fond memories from that year at worlds it was an amazing experience made a lot of friends as well that year um and do look back on it very fondly and for that reason um i kind of wanted to cover this match and it's it's weird that this match is available because the, this was streamed uh, by the Pokemon company. There's a live stream going out, but none of the VODs are actually available now. Um, and it's only because this French, I believe they're French, um, Pokeblip, uh, Pokeblip or Pokebip. I don't know which one they are. Um, they actually done, I, I think it was a French commentary coverage of the event. So this is the recording from, from their side, their sp perspective um now the the, the commentator has a common name in my match were dwee and justin finn i don't think just justin doesn't commentate anymore unfortunately he's a great guy um and dwee obviously does um amazing commentator um so we're gonna look at this we're not gonna have any commentary unfortunately but hopefully we can uh, share this together and uh, react to it because like i say coming into this match i remember finish my round two this tournament tournament and i remember just like kind of packing my stuff up and barish came across to me grabbed me it's like come on we're on stream we're on stream and i was like oh no no i don't want to be on stream i don't want to be on stream especially against barish because all i had in my head was like i knew this this mobile and got the telco was going around the tournament like people were talking about it i was like yeah, i know barish is playing that i don't know really what it's doing i don't know the team archetype is very new no one had really been playing it prior to Worlds, at least that I knew of. Um, and I hadn't played it at all. I hadn't practiced against it. So I was worried about that. And I was also like, the, the last year I played them, it didn't go so well. So I had all these thoughts going through my head. So I wasn't feeling the best about going into this match. But we got up onto the stage. You'll see this in a minute as we'll start off from the beginning. You can see there's the, the stage there. And then coming into the team preview here. So just a little bit of backstory about 2014 as well. Uh, 2014 was the year that Mega and Pokemon were introduced to the format in X and Y, which was an amazing thing. Um, obviously, Mega Kangaskhan was the big Mega. It kind of dominated the, the entire season, uh, winning regionals, nationals, uh, like everything it won. Um, so coming into Worlds, it was definitely a Pokemon that had a big target on its back and everyone was kind of gunning for it. And the you kind of were expecting a lot of Mega Kangaskhan, but it turned out there wasn't really that many Mega Kangaskhan. Uh, and I don't think any cut. There might have been one that cut. I'm not 100% sure, though. I don't think any cut, but a lot of Mega Mobile to kind of counteract the, the Kangaskhan. As you can see, uh, Barish's team here is a Polito the Kingdra. Uh, which is a really nice rain call rain very strong that year as well um not so much with the kingdra you normally saw the ludicolo so the kingdra was a nice pick obviously faster than ludicolo as well so it gives you a little bit more offensive option there 
uh, but without the fake out. And then you've got Mowile, the Kangaskhan, both Megas. So a double Mega team, really nice. Flexibility as well with the trap from the Gothitelle and then rounding off with Zapdos. Um, so a really nice team and pretty scary to kind of face off against in team preview. Now my team, I had three of the same Pokemon as Barish. I had the Politoed, the Mowile and the Zapdos. But instead of Kingdra, I had Ludicolo. Uh, instead of Kangaskhan, I had Garchomp. And then instead of Gothitelle, I was playing Tyranitar. So I was playing a, a sand and rain kind of core um, this, this year. And I, I figured like double weather give me the most flexibility, most options to play around. Uh, I definitely wanted to play Mega Kang, uh, Mega Mobile as my, my Mega. It was something I played at the very start of the format and I kind of fell in love with from the very beginning at X and Y. So uh, it was something I wanted to go with. And I, I love Politoed uh, Ludicolo. It was one of my favorite calls from early generations and even into X and Y. So as you can see, we're going into it. There's there's the players down in the bottom corner. There's Barish on the right and then myself on the left there. As you can see, big, big zoom up of me. I don't know if I look much different. <laughs> Probably look a lot different than Barish there. They're looking all like he does glowing glowing but yeah i was i was i was seriously nervous about this match i was like i really didn't i wanted to do well and i thought round three i don't want to lose that's the big thing and i knew the gothitel was a big threat in team preview so i had to my only thing that i could lead here to to kind of get around the gothitel give me a pivot out was my zapdos it was fast and it had volt switch so i knew that would give me an option to kind of reposition uh, i couldn't exactly lead garchomp here because the intimidate really does um kind of slow the momentum down with garchomp from the opposing mobile and i thought if i get in a trick room situation and i'm trapped with garchomp on the field against the mobile and trick room it's like it's going to be game over especially intimidated so my idea was really to try and pivot out with zapdos get garchomp in um and just use my mobile intimidate to kind of slow barish's mobile if it came in and anyway leading the zapdos give me a decent ish kind of matchup against the rain core as well as we'll see in a little bit but uh, this is the first match we're going to see both mobile's mega evolve and I think mine mega before his, so indicating that his is the slower one. So if the trick room does go up like we're suspecting here, then um, it will get a little bit tricky for us. So we do go for the Volt Switch, suspecting that, you know, the Gothitelle's going to trick room. So that's the slot that we we can definitely pivot out on. Um, and this gives me the opportunity to get Garchomp on at the field, which is amazing. And the thing is, you would think, okay, well... Garchomp's not in the greatest position here. We are in a trick room against a Mega Mowile. But I built this Garchomp specifically for the World Championships, thinking that Mowile could be quite a popular Pokemon. And it was actually built to take Mega Mowile on like one on one and always win. Um, because we're holding a Roselli Berry and Garchomp's EV to take a Play Rough and then a Sucker Punch from a Mowile. Unintimidated as well. So we've got the Intimidate onto his. Mega Mawile right now. So I felt really comfortable in this position. I know the Mawile's just protected as well. So I've got a pretty free Earthquake this turn. Uh, as we see a Fire Fang from his Mawile into mine. We do protect and the Psychic doubling in on our Mawile. But we do get that Earthquake here. And um, we do get some nice big fat damage onto both Pokemon. And uh, put both the Gothitelle and the Mawile into very close KO range. So one more Earthquake will do the job, but I can't really Earthquake this turn because of my my Mawile out on the field. And uh, it's kind of a bit counterproductive if I do go for an Earthquake here. Um, just because we'd just be damaging our own Mawile, which won't help. But we do see the Fire Fang. Um, it's a nice tech as well. It wasn't really something you saw very often on Mawiles, but for the, the Mawile, Mawile Mirror, it's a very good option. Uh, we go for that Iron Head. It's in a low enough range to pick the knockup out there. Obviously being part fairy as well, it's not resistant, it's just neutral. And then a Dragon Claw cleans up the Gothitelle, removes the trap, and we're sitting right now in a very good position. But I don't really know if you can see, I'm very, very kind of like, I'm not very reactionary. Like I don't react very much in matches at all. Like you never would see me pop off or anything like that, very rarely anyway. Um, and I like to just try and concentrate until that very last turn, <laughs> where I definitely know I won, because otherwise I feel like in big high situations like this, I get very complacent, like I don't want to get complacent. And I feel like if I get ahead of myself, that's what will happen and I can let my opponent back in. So if I stay very, very concentrated, 
my head, then it works at least for me. So we've got the Zapdos and the Politoed coming in. Now we're still in Trick Room, so we're not in the best position at all. Uh, Garchomp, um, not in any good position uh, against an Ice Beam, potentially Politoed and a uh, Hidden Part Ice from the Zapdos. So we do protect here. We see the Ice Beam from the Politoed and uh, we do underspeed the Zapdos, which is nice and manage to get a play rough off and do some, some good damage as uh, the Zapdos does take a uh, more while down. But I think here, I'm thinking that I've probably got Tyranitar in the back. So I can bring Titor in now, which gets rid of the rain um, and gives us a little bit of a better option against um, the Politoed and definitely a better option against the Zapdos. Yeah, it is the Tyranitar. And it's strange because I don't, I wasn't running a Protect on my Tyranitar. Uh, I wanted Thunder Wave and I wanted Taunt, which seemed like the craziest, craziest options ever to run on a Tyranitar. And I think I had Assurance in Crunch. Uh, sorry, Assurance and Rock Slide was the was the mad move set with the Lumberry, and the Taunt was there to really help me shut down uh, opposing Amoongus. Uh, I didn't want to get like spored, um, and I, was it Amoongus or was it? I don't know if Amoongus was. No, oh, Amoongus was in this. I'm pretty sure it was Amoongus and Smeagol's as well. Um, so I could always get the. I'd always wake up and then be able to taunt opposing Smeagol's. Um, and obviously taunt Amoongus before they could do anything like that. But we get the Rock Slide off. Take the. The, um, the Zapdos down, uh, obviously we're slower than the Zapdos as well. And then we, we switched out Garchomp, keep it for later. The dimensions turn back as we get a Zapdos onto the field. And now we can just Thunderbolt and uh, take the, the Politoed down pretty easily. And that's like a nice, easy game one for us. I feel like we do have a good matchup against Barish's team as well. So we get the little cheeky handshake there. Um, but yeah, like I felt good about that. It was nice to get the win, obviously, to take that first game. But it's like it's still not anything like I always feel like if, if sometimes if a game goes that well early on, you know, the second game is going to be like that much harder because your opponent at this high level as well, they're going to be throwing everything at you to claw the game back. And if you lose that second game, I feel like it's almost even more difficult to win the third game where your opponent's got all the momentum going into that third game, coming off a, a win in the second one, if that makes sense anyway. So it's like even higher stakes going into the second game for me just to try and lock it up because if you can, can just nick it here, I still have a lot of tricks on my team that I haven't revealed in game one, which is very nice. Like we haven't revealed the Roselli Berry. We haven't revealed the item on Tyranitar. Um... And I don't think we've revealed the item on Zapdos either, which is which is a big, big uh, key component because we're running Scarf Zapdos as well. And I don't think I'm making that many waves at the tournament yet. Just round three that I uh, <laughs> um, need to like be worried about people scouting my team or knowing like what items and things I'm running. So um, I'm probably at that stage of the tournament where I'm kind of just just moseying along. And no one's really noticing so that's quite like a benefit for me so we actually see him uh change it up here with the kingdra and the polytoad which makes things a little bit more awkward for us um especially for uh we we really need to just get rid of the king if we can get rid of the kingdra uh things become a lot easier for us um the polytoad i'm not too worried about um because we've probably i think we've got tyranitar i think we've got tyranitar and garchomp in the back i think we've got the same two in the back um but I just need to get rid of this Kingdra. This is the the bit the big problem for us. They need to get rid of the Kingdra. Once that's gone, like we've got the fastest thing on the field then. Because we with my Zapdos, it's scarfed, it outspeeds um max speed, modest, Ludicolo in the rain. So we always get the jump on that, but that doesn't give me the jump on Kingdra. So in this matchup, this is where it was very awkward for me because I was like, okay, most of the time I can kind of catch my opponent off guard. They're going to let their guard down with the, the Politoed potentially because the Ludi can hit us first. Um, but in this situation, I can't actually outspeed the Kingdra, which is a little bit awkward now we do see it go for a muddy water and it does a big big fat damage so i don't know whether that's specs or not i would expect it to be choice specs no it's life orb sorry life orb man life orb does so much damage does so much damage you get the play rough off and manage to survive we've got quite a bulky mobile um and the uh the kingdra is down there so i think if we hadn't had as much bulk in our mobile 
and we would have uh, we wouldn't have been in such a good position because that probably would take down no your normal 252 hp more while pretty easily there uh the thunder obviously going into the protect there of the polytoad and uh, the interesting story here i'm going to stop here because this zapdos right we we've taken quite a hefty amount of damage with our zapdos now this zapdos right i wanted for this tournament i wanted um if you look at the team we've not got very much coverage against grass types and i was worried about venusaur in particular and i was like i need an answer against um, mega venusaur i know more wild doesn't do a bad job but i can't just rely on that 100 percent of the time because they're gonna have probably fire types to kind of cover the venusaur and things like that so i was like okay where can i fit something on my team to kind of um help with the, the grass matchup the venusaur matchup and i was like well Titar, we could play ice beam but then it disrupts the the moveset that i've got already and i'm really kind of set on the the moveset rock slide uh, assurance t-wave and taunt i didn't really want to change that and i was looking around the other team there isn't really many options ludicolo polytod isn't really a matchup you want to bring against uh, mega venusaur so i was like the only option is zapdos and hidden power flying so i was like okay i remember booting up my y copy and i'd already caught zapdos in my x so i was like okay i need to try and reset for hidden power flying zapdos and um i'm not even exaggerating here it was like literally three weeks of soft resetting for the zapdos and i had no luck i had no luck getting it literally on and off like i used to commute like three hours a day to work and um I like was soft resetting on the way there, way home, and like I had no, I literally didn't get it. I flew out to Vancouver, and it was the night before we had to lock our battle boxes for the tournament, and I still hadn't got it. And I was like panicking at this point. I was like, I'm literally not going to get it for the tournament. I need it for the tournament, and I need this, this, this hidden power flying Zapdos. It was a weird spread. I think it's like 31, 31, 31, 30, 30, 30. So you needed all odds and then all evens. I'm pretty sure that's what the, the, the mix was there. So it was an incredibly difficult spread to get. And uh, it came to like an hour before I went to bed that night and I soft reset and I managed to get it, but it turned out the Zapdos had like zero special defense IV. Uh, it had really bad speed. This is before you could hyper train or anything like that as well. So it was like, it was really like, it was terrible. So I had to like rearrange the whole EV spread. And I was just like, okay, well, I'm going to have to sacrifice any sort of bulk I've got on the Zapdos, which was a good amount of bulk. Um, but, and then just max out the speed to get the speeds that I need because that's the most important thing and then just put the rest in uh, physical attack because uh, sorry special attack and just like forget about any bulk and just have to go into the tournament like that because I've got no other option I can't afford to soft reset now after just getting it after like three weeks of soft resetting for it so it was like it was a night it was a bit of a nightmare but it worked out all right in the end but this Zapdos taking a lot more damage there from the the muddy water so a little bit of a backstory uh Mowile coming in now getting intimidate which is really big onto our Mowile um and we've obviously now got to worry about sucker punch but at this point I'm like does he have sucker punch because he's got the fire fang normally you have iron head play rough sucker punch has he dropped sucker punch and just got fire fang so it might mean that I can get a thunder off into this polytoad so I can't really remember what I go for in my head I would be like let's go for the thunder into the polytoad let's try and get rid of it and get some damage onto the field because if Zapdos goes down now then it's fine um we've still got plenty of Pokemon in the back to come in and, and it would mean that Garchomp could come in as long as we get some damage onto the the opposing Politoed now with our Mawile but no we're not we're switching out okay 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 we switch out for Tyranitar okay well that makes a bit of sense I guess just to get rid of the the rain um does Mawile just protect here ah uh, okay Politoed switching out and getting the Gothitelle on the field. Okay, I wonder if I was reading this at the time. I feel like, I, I don't know. I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but I feel like this is maybe something that I did. I was scared of. If the Gothitelle comes out onto the field and then I cannot switch around and he gets the Trick Room up and, and Mowile in a, an amazing spot. Um, so we protect, we see the Mowile go for Rock Slide. Okay, um, and it's not intimidated now, which is a little bit tricky. Now, this is where the Tyranitar comes into play, okay? So, he's got the Gothitelle out on the field. He's going to go for the Trick Room. Never suspect in a million years that we've got Taunt on our Tyranitar. And this is one of these specific moments 
why I chose to run Taunt. And I think, you know, looking back at the tournament, I think I did make some good picks with, with move selections on my Pokemon for sure. I think they definitely came it. They were really pivotal and and how well my performance went that year. So I can't really complain too much about it. We get the taunt into the Gothitelle, get a nice Iron Head into the Mawile, um, and we take a player off, which takes down Titov, but it's done its job. Okay, it's stopped the Trick Room going up, and this means now that we can get Garchomp onto the field, which is amazing because we stopped the... the um, the trick room and then yeah like i say garchomp can come out onto the field now uh the the mobile's in knockout range um so we can just i think switch out mobile of our own into zapdos is a pretty safe switch uh because then it allows us to go for the earthquake pretty freely um and keep mobile maybe for a little bit later on and then if the polytoad comes onto the field as well uh, it does mean that uh, Zapdos can put a lot more pressure onto it rather than just having more while it's probably going to be slower than the Politoed and, and get knocked out from the range that we are right now. So I think that's what we do next. I'm pretty sure. I should have watched this back first, but I feel like it's better experience, like like watching it together live. Well, kind of live, not live, but you know, because I, I it's been such a long time since I've seen this match. And... Um... <laughs> Oh my god, we're there, we're there, we're there. Oh my god, look. Okay, so if you read the title here. <laughs> Lee Provost versus Boris. <laughs> oh my god, Boris, Boris Akos. How can they get this wrong? How can they get this wrong? It's bearish, like, on the screen. How can... <laughs> How can they get that wrong? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, well, we'll get back to, to Lee versus Boris. I don't even know if Barish knows this is up. I've got to point this out to him. I'm going to have to send this to him. <laughs> like, that's never, ever anything that I would have ever made a mistake for. Okay, so we don't switch the Morwell out uh, for Zapdos. Uh, we just protect it and we go for that Earthquake. Uh, we are seeing the Morwell switch out, though, and the Politoed come back in. So it's quite important that we get decent damage onto the Politoed. We get very lucky there and get a critical hit, which, it, like, we do way more damage than we should have done to the Politoed there, which makes things a lot easier for us going forward. See Psychic into the Garchomp. And now we've got to be worried because our special defense falls. Um, and obviously, the Politoed we've already seen has got Ice Beam. This Gothitelle isn't going to be um, taunted for that much longer. So it's got like a maybe one or two turns where it's it's taunted. So we need to make sure that we're getting damage onto it like now, really. Um, so we see Protect from Garchomp. My side of the field want to preserve that. And we get the player rough into the Politoed. Okay, so we must have known that we were faster than the Politoed, which is which is a big deal for us. Uh, we see the Scald come out into our mobile and pick up the knockout, but this is fine now because this means that we just get Zapdos onto the field and we've got the Disquake combination, which is one of the main reasons why I wanted to play Zapdos Garchomp this year. So running dis Discharge on Zapdos, uh, Garchomp immune to it with its ground type, and then we can Earthquake as well. It's a really old school combination, but very effective as well. So we can just literally uh, earthquake and discharge and clear the field now and then Mowile can come in we know it hasn't got sucker punch and that pretty much wraps up the game from us from this point right now and i'm kind of feeling like okay nothing going seriously wrong like misclicking or anything like that we should have wrapped up this one and that would take us to 3-0 um with two more rounds um is it two more rounds two more rounds no 3-0 three, three more rounds left to play in the 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 the, the, the qualifying rounds so uh, this is equivalent to like day three what you get now um but we didn't have like day we did we didn't have a day one it was just the lcq and then the main event um so the gothitelle going for the protector um and we'll go for a, a nice juicy discharge which gets rid of the polytoad and being scarfed zapdos as well really helps us out and then the mobile just to come in uh, as the taunt is worn off on the gothitelle obviously i was a little bit worried i think at that point that the gothitelle may survive like this combination because gothitelle can be bulky and if it survives then that would mean it would lose the game i'd lose the game if the gothitelle gets a trick room up that would be it there's no coming back from this point so um we got ourselves into a good end position here where like we should be doing enough with Discharge and Earthquake to, to kind of clean this game up. So uh, we do see Monwell going for that Protect. And that's the right play because, like I say, if, if Gothitelle can take this combination, which 
depending on how it's built, you know, depending on what happens. See, so he takes the, the, the uh, discharge pretty well. We do get the paralysis. Um, you can see me there just apologizing for the paralysis, but I don't really think it comes into play. It doesn't matter because I think the earthquake is um, more than enough to take down the Gothitelle. And then there's just a more while there, but um, we do manage to, to wrap this one up pretty easily. I don't know if we see a forfeit. I don't even, yeah, I think we just, I don't know if we forfeit in these ones because we are on stream, so we'll probably finish it out as you're advised to on stream. If you're on stream, finish your matches, don't forfeit ever. And that Zapdos was on fire that tournament as well. We get the, like discharge paralysis is nuts as well. So it's, it's very handy, but the speed tiers are, like the speed mechanics are very different back here than they are on Sword and Shield. But we do wrap it up. And uh, honestly, to this day now, it's like, it's still a match that I uh, I look back on very fondly. And uh, like I say, it was a massive pleasure to play Barish and um, he's an incredible player. So getting the result there was like really nice. And I think even after the match, I was like, I was still like a bit like, you know, just don't know what's really going on. Just focused on the tournament on my next match and just trying to do well. And I think I play, I'm not sure who I play in the next round. I can't remember. Might've been Colin, Colin Hire. Might've been. No, I think I play Colin. Yeah, I play Colin round five. I play Colin round five. I can't remember who I play round four. Um, and then I play Marcus Liu in round six, I believe. Um, and then I finish, I finish Swiss five and one, I think third seed or something like that. I can't really remember. I think it was third, third seed. And then go on to play um, Judy in the the uh, the top eight in the, the quarterfinals. And uh, Judy wins and then goes on to the final to play Sejan in that like iconic final with Pachirisu and Sejin kind of taking the championship that year but um there we go that is it my friends it's uh that's been a really fun video I've really enjoyed it so there's many more matches out there that we could look at and do this sort of thing on but I thought this was quite a nice one to come in with uh just talk about a little backstory of myself as well as some of my experiences and look back at an old match as well that I have like such fond memories of and uh, just share that with you guys so I hope you've enjoyed it it's been a lot of fun doing it if you'd like to see more of these episodes and things like that in the future let me know um but uh leave your comments down below let me know what your thoughts are on the match and if you ever did watch that live or if you were involved in that season or anything like that. I'd love to hear your experiences from that year at the World Championships. It would be a lot of fun to uh, to hear about those as well. Or just that season as well. Obviously, the 2014 season was incredibly um, amazing. We had huge Pokemon boom that year with X and Y. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And hopefully, even though we've got the current situation going on at the minute in the world, hopefully we can get back to live events in in very near future and kind of have these experiences again because they're a lot of fun and meeting and making new friends and stuff like that but that is for another time so i'm gonna end it there friends hope you've enjoyed today's episode really thanks for tuning in and uh, i'll uh, i look forward to reading the comments and see you all for the next one so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye